four bites I had on that underspin. I'm out on Lake Toho today with Ron from Illinois. Fished with Ron before, a few years ago. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do a video about today. And I saw recently, everybody seems to be talking about the fall transition in bass fishing. And I watched a couple of the videos. Fluke Master put one out, Gene Jensen. I think Mystery Tackle Box put one out. And I've had a couple of locals asking me about it also, about this fall transition, which didn't seem to be much of a topic that I paid much attention to until this year. It seems to be everybody's talking about the, the fall transition. Watched a couple of videos and they're all really well done and accurate. The water's cooling down, fish are moving up shallow in pockets and cruising. You can catch them on more exciting baits. Like here in Florida, most of the summer we get stuck dragging a worm, fishing super slow. The water gets up to 95 degrees and then all of a sudden you get some cooler nights and the days are shorter and the water starts cooling down like we're in 79 degree water here. But the fall transition is a little bit different here. We haven't really had any breaks in the weather. It's still 94 degrees yesterday. So we don't have much of a fall transition or it doesn't actually happen till about late November or December. So while everybody else is doing all that stuff in other parts of the country, here in Florida, especially on these shallow lakes, like we're on Lake Toho, you can't really move up shallow yet. Our, the, everything that's inside the grass line, up in the flats, is completely matted up with thick, topped out hydrilla. There's a few places on this 20,000 acre lake that you can get up into, but it might be maybe 100 acres of it where we could get up and fish up in shallow stuff minus flipping but this isn't really the time of year that you're going to be going out flipping uh, this whole lake's shallow so they don't have to move up shallow and later on today if everything plays out right we'll be fishing out in the middle of the lake on a shallower hump and they are starting to chase more bait but we have a lot of thick hydrilla so we're not throwing the lipless crankbaits i can't get them to really hit a spinnerbait yet or anything like that i did just catch one on this little heavy metal tungsten underspin i got ron throwing a worm if you're watching some of these videos and you're from Florida, the, the fall transition videos and you don't understand them or don't think they're accurate, they are accurate when you're not in Florida. Florida here is just a little bit different. We're still six weeks, eight weeks away from our very short fall transition, which usually involves a late season shad spawn. So what we're going to be doing today is hunting around. They're not really biting that great in the morning. We have a few fish blowing up around us here in this open water spot. We're going to be fishing some grass lines. And if everything goes right, right in the middle of the day, we might be catching some big fish on top water. And I did bring a few shiners just to get us through the slow parts. So stick with us and see what we can do. There's one. There you go. Little guy. He hit it the right way. So our first spot didn't work out. We moved down the lake. I know you probably can't see much because the camera's right in the sun. We're just trying to, we've been starting out real slow on Lake Toho lately. And we're not getting very many bites early. Most of our bites have been coming in the middle of the day. I caught that one on underspin, he missed a couple. We got down on this grass line that I've been fishing for a while. And he just caught that little one on a worm, trick worm. But the best is yet to come if this weather plays out the way I think it's going to and we're going to have a good second half of the day. Just come in. Oh, there you go. Is that a better one? Oh man, I thought it was bigger, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did when I set the hook too, but he moved. He didn't move a lot when you set the hook on him. Yeah, no, that's what I said. Getting all the babies out of the way. Yeah, he. When I set the hook, there was he had moved, but it, but it was that was that right on the grass line or out right, from right a little on. bit? Yeah, I hadn't even. I see. Kind of going on the whole theme of this video with the fall transition. I don't know how well you can see in this camera here, but up inside here are some open areas where there's thin grass, and you can get back in there and fish around. And I I went I've gone back in there twice here lately since I found the fish on this outside grass line. 
you would think with the water cooling down that these fish might be pushing up in there or in this thinner Kissimmee grass that you see here. But both times I've gone up in there, it's, this is one of the few areas that's not completely matted up with hydrilla. All around us out here in this open water, there's a, a lot of matted up hydrilla, but up in here, it is gorgeous. It, you could throw a frog, a speed worm, a swim jig, kind of whatever you wanted to fish in there, a fluke. You get up in there and there's no bait fish. There's nothing cruising around. There's just nothing up in there. But there are bait fish on this outside grass line. And even though our water's 12 degrees cooler than it was two weeks ago, these fish are just out here because literally all they care about is food. So if the uh, if we're supposed to be going in this fall transition, being different here in Florida, they're not gonna go up shallow just because the water's cooler if there's no food. And so we're still out here catching them on this outside grass line. We're catching some on the grass line. Hasn't been crazy. Well, you caught three down here. I missed a couple. I missed one. That's the only second bite I've had. I had to just let it sit there though. I didn't even move it. Not too bad. They will eat anything as long as it's black and blue. Black. This is what our seventh or eighth fish I think so, yeah. on this grass line. And we're not setting the world on fire with size. But they are biting and all, I mean this is what I call dumb fishing. We're basically going down a grass line and throwing worms and creature baits at the grass line. The only thing that's changed here in this little section is it's not just a hard grass line. There's little clumps of isolated hydrilla out from it and we're getting some bites out in that stuff. But we're not doing anything magical. I'm sitting here staring at these grass flats back in here. Not even going back in them. One, I don't see anything happening back there. So we're close enough to that stuff that if they were chasing bait around in there and stuff was going on, they would be able to see it. And I'm sure somebody will say, you know, well, why wouldn't you get up there and flip that grass? I just, there's no reason for us to have to flip the grass right now. I don't think if we move this boat five feet from that grass line and put the baits in the same places that we're putting them anyway, that we're gonna catch more and bigger fish simply because we have bigger rods in our hand. We're just catching, we'd be sitting on top of the fish that we are catching here in this last little bit. So we're just dumb fishing. See, there's this is a thicker area right here. And then there's areas where it dies down. Oh, see, see what's he chasing? Oh, he's chasing something. Did you big. see how big it is? That thing was big. See? Yeah. That's they're, a, they're that big. Yeah, what what is it though? Oh. Is that it's a shine? A it's it's silver. It's a big old shit. Oh, that's a big fish chasing. So I know the camera's at a bad angle. This is a spot I've been waiting to fish all day long. I wasn't sure if it was gonna set up right because I wanted to be dead calm and sunny. And we had a lot of cloud cover this morning and then now we don't. And I really can't tell what these fish are chasing out here. I'm out in the middle of Lake Toho on my secret spot. It's a hump with grass on it and they're eating stuff, they're chasing stuff out of the water, it's this big. I can't tell if they're big shad or if they're bluegill, they're not shiners. They're too black. Like gizzard shit. I don't know what they are, but they're eating stuff that's this big. And bass this big don't eat stuff this big very often. There's some big, big fish out here, and it is setting up perfect. And I've got him throwing a topwater plug. We caught seven or eight this morning on that grass line, 
I don't know how many of those you'll see. That'll kind of depend on what we do out here. But I also brought, just because, some big juicy golden shiners, wild shiners. And we're gonna throw some of those out here because he's here for one day and he said, whatever we gotta do to catch the most and the biggest. And so we're gonna throw some shiners. But I'm gonna man the shiner pole for him and he's throwing a topwater plug and we'll see which one of these works best. But we're sitting here, don't know what the camera can pick up, but they are crushing some sort of bait fish that's this big. I think some of them are bluegill. I saw yesterday and that might be some big shad or something that he was, I mean the shad, that was eight inches long what he was chasing. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna throw this shiner out there. GPSing? <laughs> no idea. Maybe I know him. Out here for a reason. Man, I didn't know if you heard that. I was gonna yeah. Tell, I was gonna tell you that. So sometimes when you're on Lake Tahoe out and fishing in the middle, people just run up to you and start GPS and spots like this guy's doing behind us. <laughs> Jeez. And they're visibly looking at the GPS. I thought maybe I knew him. And I literally just hear him say to the other guy, he's out here for a reason. That's exactly what I heard. I was going to tell you. Jeez. People don't even try and hide it anymore. They used to, they used to run by you at 60 miles per hour and mark the GPS and come back when you're not. <laughs> but now they run up to you out in the dead middle of the lake, GPS your spot and start fishing. Don't own the lake again and now we're going to catch one in front of them and uh, <laughs> give them more confidence in the spot there you go jeez well it was good while it lasted i had this spot myself for about two weeks pick them back up here's a little helpful hint for hole jumpers out there sound travels really well over water so you can pretend you're not hole jumping. But if you're going to do it, don't pull up to the spot and go, he's out here for a reason yeah. while you're pointing at the GPS and then put your trolling motor down. You're not hiding the fact that you're hole jumping. Not at all. Where have the days gone where people found their own fishing spots? Oh, there he is. Good Lord. There he is. I don't know if it's as big as it looks. It sounded big. <laughs> and I believe it's a good fish. It's our first bite on top water. Feel like a good one. He sounded like a nine pounder, <laughs> but he lost about six pounds. Yeah, I believe Coming back so. to the boat. He stroked it. <laughs> he hit it like a huge one. Man. <laughs> it's not bad. No, not so Oh, bad. there he went. That's all right. Sorry. No, no I was going to try and lift him up and go down underneath him. I wasn't going to grab him by the mouth. No big deal. The way he ate it was worth it all. <laughs> what you're not going to see in the video <laughs> is that uh, we came out here all excited, caught a few fish on shiners, and didn't get a single bite on artificial. We got It was bright sunshine. We had gnats all over us, all these little hydrilla gnats, which you probably can't see. We went around and fished some other places. He caught one on a brush pile. And then I decided to come back here. Either the gnats aren't as bad or they haven't found us yet. But we finally got the first bite on top. There are so many big fish out here on this hump and they're not cooperating real well today. We've caught, what, four on shiners out here? And so. that's the first one. And I hope I was aiming towards it when it hit because that was a giant blow up, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that was what they've tough. been doing out here though, is just crushing it. Oh yeah, it was. They're like just that. not as active for some reason. They're scattered out. We're seeing it's the middle of the day. One just blew up there. One blew up out there. I don't know what they're chasing. I can't tell. Big, some big shad or maybe shiners. They're real black on back. But we gave it a second chance. We need a two mile an hour wind to keep these stupid gnats off of us. Because bug spray doesn't do it. I don't even think he ate that one. Good thing you're doing an eight-hour trip, because uh, might get better. <laughs> if it was a six-hour trip, we'd have been in a little bit ago. Yeah. And 
Oh, there he came back and got it again. Got him this got time. Got him that time? Yep. Yeah, we got zero bites on top water this morning. I got my talons down, we're not even moving. About like the last one. Yeah. Man, they're, they're just eating. If he hadn't fished with me before, he probably wouldn't have wanted to throw that top water, but yeah. I told him they'd bite top water out here. He caught sideways. He's, he's not as big as that last no. one. Was. Dude, but he ate it, it like the last one did. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe he came back and ate it. I know. <laughs> I figured I'd try it. This is how you want to hook them in a tournament, but it's also not how you want to hook them in a tournament because you want to get back out there and they've got hooks. Like, I'm not even sure how sometimes how these treble hooks go up in there like that. It is crazy though, how you can even miss a fish on top water with three treble hooks hanging down. Cause you lay this thing down on your carpet and every single one of them be in the carpet. <laughs> a fish comes up and tries to eat it and half the time they'll miss, they miss it. Finally biting at quarter after one in the afternoon. That was the same spot you caught the other one too, wasn't it? Yeah, a little bit, but pretty close, yeah. Wasn't far off. <laughs> I don't think Get him? So. No. no. Unless he was coming at me and I get another chance. Is he still on there? Yep. <laughs> came right back to the boat. I think he came back and hit it again before the bobber even had a chance to come up. I wonder if it's the same fish. I don't know. He run, he's still running straight at the boat. Yeah. came out here to talk about I came out here to take Ron fishing but I wanted to talk about our fall transition and how we don't have much of one and it's kind of proving itself to be that way because it's like a hundred degrees out here there's no wind it's uh, almost October <laughs> we're the last week of September basically and we have gnats all over us we've caught 15 or so fish now. So. It's been okay. No big ones. But nothing's changed. While the rest of the country's cooling down, fish are moving. We won't get our fall transition here probably till the lakes up north are frozen, December. And then they just go right into spawning. Right at the end of December, all the way through April, they'll be spawning. We're doing okay. For the weather that we have today being a little too calm and a little too sunny. Um, our water's gone up five degrees since we got out here. It's almost 84 now. Uh, I guess we're doing all right. Jeez, yeah. get that one? Yeah. That one crushed his top water. If they're only as big as their blowups. I uh, know. He blew up big. We're a pretty good boy. Oh, you got him, in the, top got of him the in the top of the head. Jeez. <laughs> Made him feel good, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he felt like a dandy. <laughs> oh. But he crushed it. How many times have you thrown in that same spot? I don't know how you know? many times, yeah. That's the thing. I'm not out here moving around. We're sitting in one spot because we got a shiner. We got our last shiner out. And, uh,. So we're basically just casting the same spot over and over and they come up and hit his top water plug every once in a while. This one caught himself. Yeah. That's why he felt good. Yeah. <laughs> you bring somebody out here and take all the hooks off their lures that think they were missing 10 pounders every all day. Oh, hey, they're blowing up on it for sure. We're going to head in here in a minute. We had a decent day. We caught between 15 and 20, but we kind of had to work for them. Kind of came out here to talk about the fall transition type deal that's kind of being talked about a lot on social media and on YouTube and stuff like that and how we don't have much of it here in Florida. So if you're on a lake like this, shallow lakes, <clears throat> it'll come, but not now. Not like the rest of the country's hoping for. It's still hot. 
we caught some fish on top water. We caught some on shiners. We caught some on a worm. The top water bite, I mean, he, he, I think he caught four on top water. Probably missed another half dozen that he didn't even have a chance of catching. I missed three or four on top water, never even caught one, and I threw four different top water baits. But we did okay. The water's still 85 degrees here. And it's always different. The, the rest of the states, the continental US that has bass, they all seem to kind of be the same, the way the fish are patterned. Then you come into Florida and it's always different. It's more spot fishing and not so much a pattern. Like you might have a good grass line, a good brush pile, a good shell bed, and a good offshore hydrilla bed all in the same day. Where you go to a TVA lake up in North Alabama or Tennessee and they're on in the back of pockets or on secondary points and that's what you target. Here it's more spot fishing. And uh, good video my buddy, the fluke master Gene Jensen, Gene Jensen just put out was about the fall transition and the baits that he, liked to, he likes to throw. I'll put a link to, that, to his video in the description so you can kind of, because I watched the video, it was a good video. You can kind of see what uh, the fall transition is for everybody else in the country. And this is kind of what it is for us here in Florida. Just finding the spots, their good fish are gonna go wherever the food is. And that's kind of what we did today. They just didn't do well for us, but we did, we did okay. Just nothing big today. Nothing over three pounds, three and a half pounds. Uh, we saw some big fish, but we didn't catch them. But thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. See ya.